Okay, yeah, I uh, just wanted to give like a real quick update. Um, this is Kevin, Kevin Michael Miller, Kevin's Politics blog, uh, kevinpolitics.com. Um, want to sort of just refresh everybody on sort of what's going on with the Fed. Uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve uh, raised um, interest rates uh, to between 3 and 3.5 percent, raising uh, 50 basis points on the uh, Fed funds rates. Uh, this is um, significant since it's intended to uh, curtail inflation in the rest of the economy um, and also uh, uh, bring down uh, the price of gasoline and the price of uh, other uh, necessities that Americans need um, and the CPI, uh, which, is in, which is encapsulated which encapsulates the uh, inflation rate here in the United States, and so the core, uh, 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 the, the price index uh, uh, that, that's affected by wages, labor, and growth, um, saw um, a steady increase uh, over the last couple of months now. Uh, I believe it's uh, beyond the uh, 7.2. That was the high. Uh, I believe back in June, um, uh, or it's below that 7.2, back down to 6.2, 6 6 uh, between 6.2 and 5.9, uh, 5.9, 6.5. Uh, and uh, here in June, or here in August, we officially entered into a recession ending uh, June 30th uh, when GDP numbers came in at uh, 0.9 percent negative 0.9 percent growth uh, for the second quarter um, this coupled with the loss in the first quarter which was uh, 0 0.8 percent um, uh, signifies that we are officially in a recessionary environment here in the United States um, with the US economy uh, remember you just need two two uh, separate um, uh, quarters of negative growth in order to officially um, have entered into a recession um, the White House sort of tried to push back on that. Um, there was a lot going on there where people at the White House didn't necessarily want to uh, be uh, associated, uh, associate the president uh, with these bad GDP numbers. Um, the jobs numbers look spectacular, coming in two, three times, uh, oftentimes uh, more, four times or more bigger than what is projected. They, they project 268,000 jobs lost. Uh, the real projection is 558,000 jobs that are gained. And so that's about four times bigger than what they had in mind. Um, yeah, and so, uh, and so the, uh, uh, the way things are going, it appears as though with the capture uh, or the killing of Ayman al uh one of the most wanted terrorists um, in the entire world. Uh, again, he was the mastermind behind the attacks 9-11 under, and under the tutelage of, of him, uh, his one of his faithful and most uh, ardent followers, um, Osama bin Laden, uh, was able to wage a war against the United States um, and little more than, 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 than huts and uh, made out of sticks and stones and caves, cave systems, uh, which line the Afghan-Pakistani border and, uh, and his faithful allegiance of followers um, sur constantly surrounding him and protecting him. Later he was found in a, uh, in a mansion uh, outside of Abbottabad, Pakistan, which is um, where a, uh, a military academy for Pakistan is and he was uh, summarily killed in a, uh, in a raid uh, which occurred on uh, May 1st of 2011. Um, the significance of Ayman al-Zawahiri's death um, is not necessarily as significant as the death of Osama bin Laden. 
when he died back in 2011. But nevertheless, his de his death this month, um, earlier this month, sort of um, has uh, uh, solidified um, the gains uh, that the United States has made in the war on terror against Al Qaeda, certainly, which has become sort of a sort of an offshoot group. It's no longer the uh, the the uh, 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 the uh, uh, what was called a uh, uh, many, uh, mythical um, sort of Hydra monster that it once was, where if we take out one head, then the other heads will two more heads will sprout up, um, and where that one left, um, that is not the case with Al Qaeda any longer. Al Qaeda is no longer um, the sort of um, military uh, company or military uh, um, uh, uh, terrorist organization uh, that's capable of pulling off um, large-scale attacks against the United States or or most of its friends and allies in Europe, Western Europe. Um, uh, its funding has dried up. Its, uh, its training camps are either in disabuse or no longer um, um, in operation. Uh, it's war against uh, infidels and what it perceived as um, United States um, allies and intransigence um, in, in holy lands and in Muslim, Muslim uh, lands throughout the Middle East. Um, it, it, is, it, is, it, is a, it is past, past its prime. It is no longer um, the main topic of debate concerning Muslim extremism in the Middle East. Uh, it was replaced by ISIS certainly after the death of Osama bin Laden and that organization as well has been cut down and summarily uh, degraded and destroyed uh, um, the, uh, in the war in, against Syria and Iraq uh, which occurred 2014-2018 uh, uh, yeah and so my thoughts on this is that uh, uh, after so many years, after so many long years, um, sort of tracking these people down and finding them and killing them and bringing them to justice, uh, it's good to sort of have this sort of, it was, it was a bookend, for me it was a bookend. I'm in Al-Zawahiri's death, represented sort of the, the culmination, the end of a culmination in my life, where I was very young, maybe uh, 17, when the tax 9-11 occurred, and I maybe um, was able to bring a, sort of a lot of comfort to people um, at that time uh, with, uh, with my knowledge about the day as it occurred um, at my school. I was in high school. I, was, I went to a school in Illinois, um, a northeast suburbs, northwest suburbs of, uh, of Chicago called Palatine High School. Um, I remember the day only sort of vaguely. Um, I remember being told um, early in the morning on my first period class um, that uh, the plane had hit the, uh, uh, the World Trade Center, one of the, one of the buildings at the World Trade Center. Um, by, by the time I got to my second grade, my second, my second period class, um, it was clear that, uh, uh, that something bigger was amiss than just a biplane, or um, however um, I sort of imagined it in my head, I saw I saw it as just sort of a glider that ran into the World Trade Center in New York City. I didn't understand the significance of it for at least 40 minutes. Um, we were reading Shosher's Canterbury Tales, um, and so I just remember reading out loud Shosher's Canterbury Tales. We were at the night sections. It was earlier in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the book as well as in the school year. Um, and I can just remember thinking, um, wow, a glider, what's the importance of a glider? Um, by the time I get to my second period class, a survey class, um, dealing with uh, a survey was a class about economics and politics and anthropology that was required for all um, Illinois graduates in order to be able to graduate. Um, my teacher, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Cushing at the time, uh, she was um, uh, probably in her 30s. Um, she pulled down the uh, sort of the projector. I sat at the back of the classroom um, in a U shape of desk, and so the projector was right in front of me because I'm, I'm at the end of the 
end of the U, and uh, and we saw it live, not live, but video from MSNBC uh, back back then. It's called MSNBC, Microsoft um, National uh, 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 Network Broadcast Channel, MSNBC.com. She went to and uh, and I saw from Miss Cushing, Mrs. Cushing, uh, Deborah Cushing or uh, Kristen Cushing. Uh, uh, the uh, the attacks in, in that class uh, supposed to be studying politics, supposed to be studying anthropology, supposed to be studying economics, and here we are watching one of the most anthropological uh, political events to happen um, in my lifetime. And so uh, uh, it's good to see these guys brought to justice. Um, yeah, uh, you know, um, my time uh, trying to sort of uh, bring everything to a close. Um, at, coincidentally, um, as his death is coming, uh, I do, I have um, been offered um, upon graduation uh, from my program um, at, uh, this will be um, at, at a university um, in the Ivy League as well as in the Russell Group, um, Oxford University in the UK. Um, upon receiving uh, a PhD. Um, I've been offered rank um, for my participation um, uh, in the war, and so as well as as well as um, a number of, of uh, 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 awards and badges, um, uh, including um, the war on terror, GWAT, the global war on terror, uh, for, but uh, for both um, uh, for both uh, here in the United States, so the U.S. military, as well as in as well as in um, as well as in the U.K. as well, and, and my my thesis, uh, which centers around um, the global nexus of money, uh, that's in illicit finance, that's that's uh, that is uh, funding um, the wars in Iraq. And Syria, um, by uh, groups in Lebanon, groups in uh, in Iran, as well as the Russian government uh, plays a role in that, and uh, as well as the North Koreans I speak upon as well, and a number of uh, papers uh, that I've written forthcoming, and so, um, so I'm very proud of my contributions uh, uh, to the war effort. And to see it through, um, just this latest war in Ukraine, um, I've contributed, uh, you know, very, very mightily in my, in my estimation, uh, sort of being able to discern um, how much money uh, Russia has, how much money Russia is capable of, uh, of husbanding in order to uh, conduct its operations in Ukraine and whatever its next possible moves. And how do we counter those? And how do we uh, gain more influence in order to prevent them from happening in the first place? And so, uh, like I said, um, to be to be uh, granted um, this rank in the military, um, whatever it may be, if it's colonel, if it's captain, whatever it may happen to be, um, an intelligence colonel, um, I, I'm still very, very, um, is very high, very highly respected uh, in my family where I come from. I have an uncle who has uh, two bronze stars from Vietnam, um, and so uh, his contributions, as well as my own, make up sort of the bulk of our two generations' um, uh, war efforts, um, uh, both in uh, 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 communism, war against communism, as well as now this war, this global war on terror, GWAT. Uh, George W. Bush, um, a much esteemed uh, president, um, and so uh, and so to get to get rank both here in the United States as well as in in British um, orders, um, uh, that's definitely uh, a big deal in my family, and I look forward to um, uh, to it to it to it occurring uh, later this year, and hopefully I can share some of that on Instagram uh, as we go along. Um, but the Fed, back to the Fed, hiking uh, 50 basis points. Um, again, I see them hiking by another 100 points in the full 1% in this month in order to curtail inflation. But that's only because, I just really wanted to step in and say this real fast. That's only because I see, um, 
I see so many uh, uh, individuals um, um, who are saying that they're going to start to put the brakes on it. But unfortunately, if you were to look at um, sort of the uh, what's going on overseas, there was just some new reports about uh, uh, about shipping and sort of uh, uh, clog shipping lanes getting clogged up and transport hubs having to wait days in order to to offload their ships. I believe that's going to lead to an exogenous um, 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 inflationary, inflation, inflationary, exogenous inflationary um, interest rate shock. Um, and that interest rate shock comes from uh, from uh, uh, supply side uh, weakness. And so weakness on the supply side, um, where you have lower than usual supply uh, being exported from China, and you have lower than usual uh, trade trade imbalances, with China only having a hundred billion dollar trade imbalance with the United States, rather than what they usually have is about a trillion dollar trade imbalance over the last three or four presidents. Um, and so uh, you're going to see a large uh, supply side inflationary, exogenous inflationary shock um, on the side of uh, some of these smaller economies outside the United States. Um, uh, where And so that's going to lead to uh, financial accounts. Um, um, so then, so they use a different financial method than the United States and businesses. And so you're going to see in the financial sector, you're going to see a huge um, interest rate shock um, to um, um, to uh, external um, external uh, money supplies um, and external reserves, uh, financial reserves, and foreign and foreign cash. All right, and so. The ex financial reserves in foreign cash will increase, or I'm sorry, will will decrease. But they will. But if they were to raise interest rate rates, if they raise interest rates like right now before it occurs, and, and as well as the United States raises interest rates, you could see financial accounts increase. The amount of money that they receive from exporting goods would increase, um, and the amount of money that other countries receive from from exporting goods to them, uh, so them importing, uh, that country importing, uh, would would increase as well. Um, so so raising interest rates and increasing increasing um, um, uh, funding of uh, of of uh, of, uh, of of positive of positive growth shocks in the economy. Are going to be important for these smaller countries, but countries as large as China, as large as Japan, as large as Australia, as large as Indonesia, as large as China or India, as large as Pakistan, as large as any um, major trading company that you can think, or trading country that you can think of, um, it's going to be very important for them to increase interest rates in order to abate a potential. Um, financial financial accounts, uh, financial sector, uh, uh, external reserve balance uh, shock uh, due to um, supply constraints, which would which would necessarily um, um, constrain uh, uh, balance sheets and and prevent uh, any excess reserves from accumulating, and so the only way to do so. To, to, to allow those excess reserves to accumulate would be to um, have supply sh supply supply shocks accumulate. I'm sorry, to, uh, uh, interest rates to have interest rates um, um, raise interest rates at the central bank, um, as well as um, have a, a quantitative easing um, environment that will allow for the balance sheets of the government to improve the interest rates. Um, uh, increasing interest rates is going to is going to abate an interest rate shock in, to the to to the to the to the financial accounts to the financial sector and is going to allow for external reserves to increase, which is going to increase the amount of 
of uh, reserves that the um, government has in foreign currency, and then that's what that's going to allow for the government to do is that is to increase their balance sheet, overall balance sheet, because of foreign foreign currency reserves, and that's going to and that's going to play well for their economy. It's going to play well for for the government. The, the government's going to be able to absorb the shocks, those interest rate shocks, those supply side shocks. And, uh, and it's going to lead to um, the ability for the economies that do implement those policies to be able to, to uh, survive uh, this coming uh, supply side shock, uh, which is going to hit them um, and hit them uh, rather, rather hard, rather, rather, rather judiciously. Um, if you look at some of the recent um, uh, Article 4 consultations uh, coming out of the International Monetary Fund, you see places like Papua New Guinea, places like Germany, right? Their balance sheets are suffering. Uh, but uh, just recently, Germany increased its interest rates at the central bank, the European Central Bank, as well as the German uh, Central Bank, the Bundes uh, Central Bank, and uh, uh, and they've seen they've been able to see positive uptick in their econ economic um, um, position as well as as well as the balance sheet of the German um, uh, government and, and the German economy. And so uh, you can expect for these things to continue uh, to influence though as, as interest rates continue to rise here in the United States certainly and, and whoever elsewhere they should be raising interest, it should be coordination where they raise interest rates throughout the entire world in a coordinated fashion. Unfortunately, there hasn't really been that much leadership like I thought there would be. But nevertheless, uh, that's going to be one of the bigger stories to come out uh, sometime in the next two, two weeks to two months. And so, so I'm looking out for that. And so that's going to be pretty big. And so we're gonna, I'm watching uh, central banks very closely to see how they raise rates around the world. And I'm watching the U.S. Fed especially to sort of take the, uh, the onus, the impetus to take the, the, uh, the this is a, uh, 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 this is a great, uh, this is a, uh, is, a, is a point of departure for them where they, they can um, influence central bank policy throughout the rest of the world by getting this right. And the right thing to do is to raise interest rates by at least 100 basis points. Oil is coming down, and so they're they're assuming that the shocks from oil are not going to be as serious because with supply side shocks, we're also talking about um, a, a decrease in oil and oil um, uh, 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 oil services um, deliveries uh, simply because. Uh, uh, those 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 deliveries are no longer needed, and so uh, that's a, that's an exogenous uh, supply chain shock, interest rate shock, uh, to those um, countries that mainly support uh, their 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 bottom line, their their accounts through uh, funding of oil and oil reserves and petroleum extraction and delivery, and so uh, so yeah, so it's a very um, complicated. Thing, but it is doable. I expect Jerome Powell to take um, very care to make sure uh, he, a lot of behind the scenes work probably needs to be done, but he can get it done. It is possible, and I'd, I'd love to sort of be able be a, be a fly on the wall at that time to see how it all turns out. Um, I wanted to get into predictions about 2024 presidential election. My top uh, uh, presidential. Um, aspirant is how I'm look who I'm how I'm looking at it on the Republican side, especially after the indictments yet earlier today with uh, or yet earlier yesterday with uh, uh, Donald Trump and his uh, and the rating of Mar-a-Lago. Um, I can't help but say uh, 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 Abbott, uh, 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 Governor Governor uh, is it, uh, I forget his first name, but Tom Abbott. Uh, he's done, you know, one of the Wonder Kids, the Wonder Kid of the, of the 1980s, you know, part of the whole uh, Starry Pebbles and uh, 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 DOD, uh, sort of the Wonder Kids crowd, um, uh, sort of seeing um, how they're behaving as far as Abbott and the people around him. It seems certain that he will try to make a run for it um, probably later this year. You'll start to see some grumblings, a lot more grumblings. Uh, November is a, is a big month. Uh, that Ben Sass, he's looking like he's going to be doing some things. 
Uh, looks like there's a number of people on the on the Democratic side. It's, it's, it's turning into a big brouhaha. We're going to see who all comes in and how it all shapes out, and especially how the debates look, and especially how they're able to get their message across if they have a message. You see Beto O'Rourke. Um, but yeah, but it'll be very interesting to see exactly, precisely how it all works out. I mean, that would be that would be the third time that he ran for president if he if he if he does decide to run, and so so yeah, so it's very interesting to see, and uh, and hopefully, um, you know, we can see uh, sort of how how it all works out on both sides. I'm gonna let that just sit right there. Um, hopefully interest rates are raised throughout the rest of the world. Um, bring up current account balances, account, or foreign account reserves, financial accounts would improve, financial sector would improve, uh, ter ter terms of trade would improve, and we'd see a lot, a lot more uh, uh, sort of, um, um, uh, sort of you know, equilibrium uh, throughout the rest of the world, especially here in America, and especially throughout uh, some of the more emerging economies in the rest of the world. And so I look at China, and so I look forward to sort of seeing that and hearing about more. And uh, I'll probably post um, hopefully later when I get closer to graduating. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Okay. Take care.